worship can only be 15 minutes and you know you can right, only do right, that and right. you got to go cook dinner we, that, that season's over and I'm gonna tell you why because what's coming requires you to yeah. know how you got your strength Amen. what's coming requires you to know that it's not your mother's strength yeah. it's yeah. not your dad's strength it's not great grandma's strength it's yeah. the strength you got when you chose yeah, to yeah, provide yeah. When you chose to wait yeah. in his presence I'm telling you, I just encourage you to carve out that space in your yes. house. I don't care if it's an old whatever chair, designated, yes. anointed, yes. Yes. your yes. time to sit and wait. Yes. Mm. Do you guys realize that COVID is minor compared to what they say is coming? Mm. They're probably cooking something up in some lab somewhere to release. And let me tell you, somebody said something interesting. I'm not going to say I believe it. I am going to let I'm a see law. Population growth is more than people. Some people like. So they got to do certain things to take it's out worse. segments of the population. And the best and most effective yeah. way is illness. Yeah. Is sickness. Yeah. We're not going to bow to that. No. Amen. We're not going to bow to sickness. We're not going to bow to early death. We're not going right. to bow to destruction right. over Amen. our homes. Amen. We're not going to bow to Amen. just you just devil. You Amen. just can't come anytime you want. That's right. Like a city and take it. That's We're not right. bowing to that. Amen. 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 Now is the time to figure out where your strength comes from. Amen. You got a whole warning that somebody else probably won't ever hear at their church. You got a whole warning to get your house together. Yes. You got a whole warning to say, that's my chair. That's Amen. where I meet God. You got a whole time to say, yeah, I'm going to get up a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah, I got to not do that. Because now is the time to get strength. Amen. What's coming on the earth, listen, it's not going to be a plaything. It's not going to be a plaything. That's not to make you scared. It's to make you run to the altar of God and say, Lord, prepare me. So yes. I can help my family. Yes. I can yes. help my friends. I can Thank be you, able God. to encourage and Thank restore. You, God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, the number one thing that the enemy is always going to use is the power of distraction. You may be seated. He loves to keep us distracted from That's the real right. and from the truth. He loves to keep us caught up in our emotional selves and what happened to me and why, why this was so difficult and why this was so hard. And then he'll, he'll magnify your sin too to tell you, you can't go by. You did X, Y, Z. You, you can't, you, you didn't cuss that girl out of the hospital. You know you can't come and sit and wait. He will always convince you that you're worse off than you really, really are. Assuming you've repented from whatever you, you know you did. So how's everybody feeling today? Good. So glad to see our Hartsville family and Jake. Jake, stand up. I just got to see how tall you are. I have a feeling you're taller than me almost. <laughs> Good to see you. Happy birthday, Pastor Tiffany, one day late. We hope your day was awesome. Was it awesome? It was good. It was good. Brother Jesse, you took care of that birthday? You go. Brother Jesse, you handled that birthday? All right, let's give him a hand. I love it, I love it, I love it. Today I'm going to come and talk a little bit about um, the early church and we're going to move on a little bit. And a couple things I just thought about um, as I was, you know, just thinking about um, last week's sermon. I wish I would have been able to experience a house church experience in the first century church. I just really feel like, you know how you feel like if you could just at one time just go someplace else, not astral project, but just to be there and experience it, that's one thing I'd want to experience, to partake in your communion, to worship without the years of church tradition being attached to it, to pray for boldness, um, to see the sold out commitment of each Christian. Could you imagine, could you just imagine the first Christians in the early church, the Christians of the early church were actually revolutionaries. Say revolutionaries. Revolutionaries. They went in and just, just flipped stuff upside down all the way around and caused massive change to touch the earth. The group they formed was in many ways very different from what we know as our church today. You just think about it. They were a counterculture in the midst of tradition. And remember, a counterculture is a culture that is going to do it completely different than the established norms. They're like, no, we're not doing it that way. 
I want to say also that according to the book of Acts, they met in their homes and devoted themselves to God's word. So while I'm talking, turn with me to Acts 2. And we're going to start at 42. And devoted means, um, in this text, it's the Greek word for devoted is proskarterio. And translated, it means to be steadfastly attentive unto something to give unremitting care to a thing. So that's the, when, they, when they say they were devoted, when the text says they are devoted, it means they were steadfastly attentive unto their community and they were unremitting in the care of their community. Can you imagine that? Most of us don't have a community we could call on. Right. Most of us don't have somebody that'd be like, yeah, you, you know, this power got to be turned off. Let me see what we can do as a community. Now, if you got your power turned off because you did something crazy, then maybe your community is going to have to stand up and say no. Because that's love. Because you can't keep doing that, right? You know? But I'm saying, if situations happen and you get into like a, a real scrape or something, a community can come alongside and help. So Acts 2 and 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So let's, let's look at that. They devoted themselves to. Two, anything following two means this is what they did. To the apostles' teaching, say teaching. 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 To the fellowship. Fellowship. The fellowship. To the breaking of bread. The breaking, breaking of bread. bread. And prayer. And, and prayer. prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the, the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. Did they say it on Sunday? No. no. It said every day. Every day. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Proscaterio, devoted, means to adhere to one, to be his adherent, to be devoted or constant to one. Husbands and wives need to be devoted. To be steadfastly attentive unto, to give unremitting care to a thing. And I love this one, to persevere and not to faint. I can imagine one of the early Christians might have been like, oh, my toe hurts, I can't go today. I go in the temple today. Oh, oh, you know, I hit my elbow on the rock when I was getting water. I don't think I'm going. It's not that they were perfect people, but they were like-minded and they were community enough to know how to swoop in and help somebody yeah. when they got weak. I yeah. think that's the power that's of it. community. So there's seven characteristics of the um, early church I want us to look at today. They come straight out of verses 42 through 47. So quickly, number one, uh, the the early church was a learning church. They were devoted to the instruction of the apostles as they taught the scriptures. Well, there was no Zoom, so that kind of meant they had to be at the temple, right? They right. had to be wherever the apostles were teaching. So they didn't count it robbery every day to go and to learn. Number two, it was a church of fellowship. They were connected, they were close, and they fellowshiped. Does that mean there weren't disagreements? Absolutely, probably not. They probably were disagreeing. We all accused a couple, by the way. Uh, Father, I just bless that union in Jesus' name. They're starting to even look, look, look alike. Oh. They say that's what happens. I don't know. Uh, so, Father, we just well, bless Lord this union should. in Jesus' no. name. No. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name for what you're doing here for the yes. Smiths. God, I thank you, God, Lord. that you have just caused a fresh wave of anointing yes. to touch their lives to touch their house. I see where you guys have been doing some work, and the work is showing and it's paying oh, off in Jesus' name. Hard work. Hard work. That's right. Hard work. <laughs> we do it. We got to do the work. Number three, it was a praying mm -hmm. church. They always prayed to God before they went out to the world. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Uh-oh, when we go out into the world, we okay? Because we, we, if we're going to be representing Jesus, we make sure we do a little Say check. That. You know, little, That's right. I would say do a little mic check before you're That's out right. there advertising, right? Just make sure you're okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Prayer is powerful, and it moves mountains. It's mountain-moving power in prayer. Number four, it was a church where things happened. Things were happening. Apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. I remember, um, I think it was Saturday prayer, and I said to Apostle, listen, I just want you to come and sit. And he got the chair. He was off for the chair. He was like, I, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I just trusted that the board who was there and that something would happen. And I talked to him yesterday, and I was like, wow, he sounds like his, his, his yeah. former, his old self. And that blessed my heart to know that if he could do it for Apostle, who carries signs, wonders, and the miraculous in him, and the enemy tried to lock up and, and, and yeah, close sure off. That's right. Imagine, imagine when many apostles get together and signs, wonders, and miracles are the hallmark. It was a sharing church. The early Christians had an intense feeling of responsibility for each other. I'm going to say this, and, and I'm going to say it, uh, it with the greatest um, sincerity. It, it was going to get over spirit. Like, I know I got this, but I'm going to see if you can get this to me. You know, I know. No, it was purity. Yeah. And I think when we talk about having responsibility for each other, everybody's got to come clean. Right. And say, you know what? I truly have me, or I don't have me, and I want to share. Mm -hmm. But be honest about it, because, you know, there's a whole takeover, and, and just, just, just the spirit of the church should, and they ought to, and you better, and no, 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 no. It's all about community but they had an intense feeling of responsibility for each other. Number six, it was a worshiping church. They knew it was important to be in God's house. Daily they met and worshiped together. Could you imagine what, would, what had been broken out? Probably maybe some days were just quiet and everybody was doing their, you know, their soft praying. Maybe there were other days where warfare broke out. Maybe there were other days where they were laying hands on and encouraging each other. Who knows? You know, we weren't there, but imagine. In the Greek, there are two words for the word good. I, I want to say that the early church was good. It was good, it was powerful. And one of the first definitions is agathos, which describes a thing as good, just good like we know it, and kalos, which means not only good, but looks good and has a great attractiveness about it. Have you ever been to a church and it's not the physical building? The building could be really nice. But there's nothing attractive about what's happening, or you don't feel like you're like, oh wait, it's like it's like you. I wouldn't say you get goosebumps, but you just kind of know that wasn't the early church. Can I say something? Uh -huh. I, I was at a funeral yesterday in one of the big, the, what they consider a mega church mm -hmm. here in the city. I think we're recording, so you might want to stay in. Thank you. Stay in. On. Okay. 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 So I was in a um, one of the mega churches here in the city, and beautiful edifice, absolutely beautiful. And when I walked in, I looked around, and I said, "God, are you here?" Uh -huh. mm. Mm. I have nothing on my calendar. Mm. <laughs> And when I tell you, I'm looking around, and I said, okay, I can see that there's excellence here. Mm -hmm. But he never answered me. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, you got all of this. Mm -hmm. This place, they've got a campus, y'all. I'm not just talking about one building. It's several buildings. And I'm just looking around, and I've gotten into the habit now. As I go from church to church, I ask that question. God, are you here? What are you doing? Mm. Because there are a lot of beautiful places, and he's not there. He's not there. He's not on his calendar. I was, I was a um, teenager, and I used to babysit for my mother's friends. Um, or the wife was her friend, and the lady was married, and she had two daughters. And sometimes they would go out and, you know, go to New York, go to Jazz, whatever, and I would babysit. The house was beautiful. 
they owned about four McDonald's restaurants, mm -hmm. and they were amassing all these wealth. And I would go to the house now. I ain't nowhere near being saved, but I could babysit. Let's just put it that way. And I would walk around the house and I'd be like, wow, their house is bigger than that house. And wow, they have bread and weed. I'm just, I don't know what but I was just, and something in my teenage mind said, but it's not happy here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. that you could have the largest, you could have the best right. trappings, you could have the greatest, but if there's no life, no joy, no happiness there, yeah. it's all for naught. So they all they worked and they worked and they worked and they worked and they were smart. She worked for a while, the wife, and they banked her check and to save to buy the restaurants and they lived off his check. Great, brilliant strategy. That's good. I, 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 I like that. That's that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. We should have a goal in mind. Right. But in the amassing no real understanding that you have a life, you have children, you're supposed to be breathing and breathing life into them, and that wasn't happening. Can you imagine a church can be the same way? Right. You could have everything that looks good, but have no spirit mm -hmm. and no life. This is why we have to really wait until we have strength, because when you have strength like that, you have insight. And insight says, oh, you God, I don't know if you're here or not. You didn't answer, but I know what I see, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be careful that we don't uh, miss understanding that we're supposed to be good stewards of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. So the apostles enjoyed the goodwill of all the people. God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And guess what? We talked about this last week. The early church was multi-what? Multicultural and multi-ethnic. So for your demonstration or my demonstration, we're going to look at this. So we got the yellow people, the green people, the orange people and their cats. We got the uh, purple people with their baby. You got the blue people, and then you've got the red people. This is probably how society was segmented. Mm -hmm. You're German, you're French, you're you're from Belgium, you're from uh, West Africa, you're from, so they just segmented themselves into different societies. And remember we said, whatever the culture was, that was your, whatever religion was in the culture, that's just what you did. Mm -hmm. So like a young person would be like, hey, I want to join you, it never would have happened. Mm -hmm. But when the early church began, different people began to move, mm -hmm. and you began to have a multi-ethnic move mm -hmm. of God, because they realized that, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the red people were doing wasn't exactly real. Like you could be like Hindu people, for instance, they'll take a bowl and they put fruit in the bowl. And the deity that they worship is supposed to eat from this bowl, obviously not naturally, but I guess in the spirit realm or whatever they believe. And then you figure out, well, wait a minute, these people are doing signs and wonders and you realize you ain't seen nothing from the fruit in the bowl. So you start, so people start gradually progressing to a multi-ethnic expression in a multi-ethnic church. Y'all do know they had animals in the early church, right? Okay, all right, I'm just saying. <laughs> they ain't just happen. And just think about it. You end up with all mm. kinds of people. Now you can imagine if there were still some blue people like, they might get this close, and they say, I'm not doing that. Because mm -mm. I like what I'm doing. I like what my grandfather taught me. I like what my well, what my village does, or I like what my community does. It's a choice. So the early church was the first time that people had the ability to choose. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you just did what your people in your community did. So there was a whole new identity to those people over there that began to say, well, wait a minute, you're blue and you're green and you're orange and you're yellow and you're lime green, you're polka dot, you're whatever. And that's secondary to what? What is that secondary to? Who we worship. <coughs> it becomes Ooh. secondary to the kingdom culture. They didn't care that you were red. They didn't care that you were orange. They didn't care that you wore a dress or you know sandals or whatever. It was immaterial because once you became a part of the early church, all of whatever you brought was secondary to the culture of the kingdom. Yes. 
And then they began to do things for the culture. They began to propagate what the culture was. They began to spread out and move out. And they began to show, hey, you could be anybody and join us. Mm -hmm. So before Christianity, there was no distinct, remember, religious identity, and then people would just did what they did with their tribe or their nation, and they had to understand that your relationship to, to Christ actually devoted wherever you came from to second place. Okay, very good on that. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't care what color you are, I don't care where you came from, I don't care if you're from the Gullah culture, I don't care if you're from... Uh, Norwegian culture, it does not matter. I know, okay. I love, I love y'all's cooking, though. I would have mastered that one day. It doesn't matter because it's secondary to kingdom culture. So if you go outside today and you're at the light and you look to your right and there's somebody that doesn't look like you and you have a thought about what they look like, you're still too much alive. Well, I don't like Spanish people. Why? Who taught you that? Where did you pick that up? Why do you believe that? What is it about Spanish people that you believe that might not even be true? I love New York. New York City is a beautiful place. But New York City was built on communities staying within mm -hmm. communities. We had Little Italy. We had Spanish Harlem. We had regular Harlem with the black people. You had Dominicans are together. Everybody together, right? Chinatown. And they just try to take right. Everybody just kind of stayed in their own in their own community. There's nothing wrong if you stay in your own community because you're going to have likewise things, you know. For instance, I'm not Italian. I don't know anything about the the, the seven fishes feast. I just know Italian people, and they tell me about it. You don't you don't abandon that. that that's right. okay. That's that's history. That's your culture. But it should not negate you. Your culture should not negate you being able to become or to worship with other people. Right. And that's the danger. Remember the whole thing in um, was it Al yeah, Alabama, Montgomery, and the man was trying to get the people to move the, um, their boat, and mm -hmm. they didn't want to move their boat because it, and it, just, it, it just had a little life of its own on the internet, didn't it? And I often wonder, and this is me wondering, if a white person had approached them and asked them to move their boat, had that, would that have gone the same way? I'm just saying, I don't know. But it makes you wonder how people react when race is involved. You can't assume everything is racism, because everything is not racism, but unfortunately, a lot of things are racism. Not everything, but some, a lot of things are. Did you realize that um, Hitler decided how he was gonna treat Jews? He studied American culture. And he got a strategy based on American culture. Do you realize Hitler was a little, he was, he was nothing. And he had made up in his mind he was going to be something. And he figured out a way to be something. And he figured it out by crucifying, for lack of a better way, or trying to wipe out a whole nation of people. There's this old movie. And there's somebody up there, it wasn't Hitler, but it was somebody in, I think it was in America, I wanna say. And they were spouting out all the racist uh, stuff that Hitler would do, how Hitler and all that stuff. Obviously it's a period piece, it wasn't current. And this man is standing there and he's watching it and he's kinda, of, seems like he's convicted by the look on his face, like this isn't right. And this man walks up to him and says, well, what do you think? And the guy is like, I don't know. And he was like, I don't know, I don't know what to think. And meanwhile, everybody around, they just, they're just drawing the energy off this, this, this foulness that they're releasing.